Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It's the zombie tool Zakazushi. Zakazushi. Zakuzashi is how it's permanently imprinted in my brain, so apologies in advance if I mispronounce. And honestly, it seems like a missed opportunity by zombie tools to call it the Zakuzashi. So, you know, anyway, I digress. Point is, I'm going to do a review on this sword, show the bits, bobs, and push it to failure. Rather, I already have pushed it to failure, and I will elaborate on the experiences it took to get there. But before I do, a couple quick disclaimers. One, this is a review sample courtesy of Sword Friend Matt. He is a private sword citizen out there. Zombie Tools did not send this to me. It was sent courtesy of Sword Friend Matt with the specific intention of pushing it to failure. So I know it's going to pain a lot of you to see this very fine sword diminished and not, no longer in its full condition, uh, but that's why it was sent to me. And Sword Friend Matt finds it particularly important to note that these are our weapons and that, well, their practicality and ability to do their intended purpose is an important feature. So he likes to see me push them and see what they, they can take. Anyway, uh, also note, I do study swordsmanship. None of it's really applicable. This is a, a fantasy Japanese-inspired thing, so even though I have some experience in Japanese sword arts, I don't know how applicable it is to this kind of in silhouette, perhaps, Japanese-style sword or Japanese-influenced sword, but the techniques I don't I don't necessarily think apply much. But uh, also, I do review swords. I do it quite a lot. I've got a few hundred videos under my belt talking about swords, but that doesn't make me an expert, at least not in my mind. So keep that context in mind as you hear my amusings and ramblings in this video. So some context for the review. This is a $475-ish sword, at least at the moment, as of the recording of this video. And if you want to get one Zombie Tools, as I understand it, typically has a little bit of a wait time. Uh, also, some notes around this. This is a fantasy-inspired zombie apocalypse, post-apocalyptic kind of weapon. It's not a one-to-one -one recreation of a historical piece. And it's also not based on any kind of TV show or or pre-existing media, at least as, as I'm aware. Um, so I have to gauge it just a little bit differently. As, as a zombie apocalypse weapon or an end of days weapon, uh, you'd want something, at least in my mind, a little bit more robust, something that isn't going to break down, something that's going to be forgiving as you're frantically flailing about trying to uh, bludgeon the undead as much as cut them in the head. So uh, something that's durable. You might encounter motorcycle helmets. You might miss and hit a wall. Uh, so something that's going to be forgiving, something that's going to have mass and be able to penetrate a skull, as well as something very, very durable and forgiving. And also something that's going to hold up because you may not have access to tools. There may not be somebody that can solder this or weld it or wrap it or sharpen it. You, you need something that is going to hold up for the duration of the apocalypse or at least your stay in it. So um, that is kind of the frame of mind that I'm thinking about this in. And I think an important context for, for what this is. Not that you can't just have fun with it in your backyard because you like the style of it without being a zombie prepper. But for the spirit of, of what it's intended for, I, I feel it's important to note that at the beginning. All right, I'll start with the review, the end cap, the palm of the kasha right here. So first off, there isn't one. There's just some scales and a full tang that I can make out. Now, the leather has come off slightly here through the course of throwing it at a tree, but I'll get to that later. There's no kasha to speak of, though, no pommel, just a tang and some scales on the end, and I can also make out a pin that has become exposed since some of the leather has come off. Uh, previously, it was wrapped in leather, and I found it to be really comfortable. I could hold down at the bottom if I wanted to comfortably. There was nothing that bit into my hand. Uh, I found it easier actually to index if I held it at the bottom and at the top. So down here, my I found my hand if I was using two hands to, to be towards this end bit and there wasn't really any discomfort in holding it, nothing bit into my skin anyway. In using it, there was a little bit of vibration that I would feel if I held down here, but at the same time, nothing bit into my skin from a at least build quality standpoint rather than a dynamic design perspective there's well overall it's well finished there are some tool markings that are visible and the crudeness to the zombie tools build that's present throughout there's uh, scale and splatters and you know just roughness to it at the same time it's in an end of days weapon kind of <laughs> kind of category so it's not meant to be refined perfection that doesn't excuse where there's crudeness where it's not specifically intended to be um, at the same time that it's just present throughout throughout the sword, basically. There's uh, tool markings, there's things like that, but at the same time, there's also an elegance. Now, a lot of these zombie tools weapons, if I think about the market out there, are, well, a lot of them are really overbuilt and poorly made or, or poorly designed. There's a certain elegance to the way zombie tools executes their blades, their interpretation of various historical arms, and the wakazashi here is in any exception. I happen to really like it, and I find that it's difficult to imitate. I, I see a lot of designs that seem to emulate zombie tools, perhaps because of their success, and well, I don't, I don't think they really captured. It's more than the silhouette. There's a lot of little nuances here, which hopefully come out through my camera work. But anyway, suffice to say, I like I like the design. I see tool marks, but 
I kind of excuse them a little bit in this genre of sword. Anyway, they're also, they add a little bit of character where it's important not to have tool marks like waviness in the scales. Everything is, is pinned down and there's no gap in the scales, at least in the scale portions that I can see. Uh, and also I would mention that the sword is broken now. I've thrown this at a tree and it hit butt first a few times and none of the scales popped out, none, none of it loosened. The leather ripped off around this area, uh, which I suppose is as good a time as any to move up to the grip and the leather only ripped off in some portions. The remainder of the leather grip uh, stayed on after after part of it was ripped off, which is an important note because sometimes things are only put, adhesive is only put on either end. And when one end comes off, the whole thing can, un can unravel. And in this case, it looks like adhesive was put on in such a way that it's wrapped all around. And when the adhesive came off, it didn't leave gluey, nasty bits. So <laughs> it, it remained functional despite being diminished somewhat. So the grip anyway. It has a nice waisted profile to it, which is kind of in one hand is, is easy to grip right here, but you can certainly get two hands or three if you happen to have them, uh, depending on how radiated your zombie apocalypse zone is. Uh, what I would take issue with is that it's a little bit round, so I do find it hard to index. And one thing I like to do is hold the sword in my hand and try to twist. And if I can hold it tight enough where it doesn't twist, then it usually means it's in easy to index and will stay locked in my hand. Also, if it does twist, then usually it means when I do hard strikes, uh, it starts to roll and I have to re-index or refine the edge as I'm swinging at hard things that don't, uh, well, that have a lot of impact. So in this grip, that was the case as I was cutting. Um, if I would have to re-index <laughs> if I held it in one hand, and if I held it in two hands on some of the harder strikes, it would it would be quite painful. This, uh, this little nubbin down here has a lot of reverberation, especially down at this end, but uh, this is kind of the sweet spot to hold it, right? In this, this area here, there wasn't a lot of pain, but two hands, I would definitely feel it if I, if I did. There was a lot of vibration that went into the meat of my hand, which was uh, rather uncomfortable. So if I wanted to swing really hard, I needed to hold it with one hand. I would hold it here, but that's also the worst area for turning, and it would, it would bounce around or move around or need to be re-indexed after a hard swing. The leather is spiral wrapped around the handle and adhesive must have been applied all the way throughout because it hasn't come unwound and it's still quite usable. The way that it's wrapped though gives me a lot of extra kind of retention in the thrust where the blade does a little bit more of the work. In pulling it out though, uh, this, this wrap doesn't really aid me in pulling it out. I'd almost rather it was wrapped the other way because I need that extra oomph to retrieve my blade rather than, rather than thrust in. Uh, the guard would stop me from going in. It was nice, I guess, in the thrust to do that. It really felt like I had a secure grip, but when I tried to pull it out of things, uh, I would have I would have rather had the extra grip, the extra purchase in, in the retrieval of the blade rather than the thrust. Um, anyway, it wraps around. It's a little difficult to index, as I mentioned, but where the leather was finished was at least nicely done. Up here where the fuchi would be, it's kind of tucked in. There's no fuchi, incidentally, to speak of, and the other bits of scales have not been exposed. The leather is still wrapped on here, and I'm content to leave it that way. What I do see, though, is underneath this, there's a full tang. It runs the length through, and then there are scales, which are made of aluminum i'm not i'm not sure exactly what the scales are but they are secured flat on the on the tang and have held on there there's been no creak no rattle no issues to speak of in the in the course of using this sword at least in terms of build quality nothing's rattled apart the only thing was the leather came undone but none of the scales popped off there has been no creaking no rattling nothing like that um, anyway, as I move up to the Suba, I like the artistic design here. I did see a little video of Zombie Tools making these. I think it's cool that they put the Zombie Tools logo on here. I like the splatter pattern. I like how they make them. They're a little bit unique in that respect. Uh, there's a raised rim on here, and honestly, it's, you know, there's nothing nothing ill to speak of on the, on the Suba side of things. I'm glad they didn't go with just any old thing off the shelf. They make their own thing. They put the logo in it. It seems well thought out. I also like that there's not a big gap. So the blade runs directly into the, the guard area here. And commonly enough, when that happens, there's often a gap in this area. It's designed in such a way where that's not the case. It doesn't look like there's a lot of moisture or buildup that's going to fall in between the scales or anything down here. And I, I appreciate that. I love to see no gap here or uh, no area for moisture for residue not that it's really a, a big problem from a functional standpoint but it's uh, harder to do and i prefer when it's not there personally also i imagine in the end of days side of things you're going to have goop and blood and guts and all that kind of stuff dripping down over the handle uh, having 
having it not get between the scales and that kind of stuff uh, over time perhaps might have some some functional use that I hasn't hasn't happened in my experience but uh, in theory less moisture can get down there anyway suba I like I do think it would be nice if it had maybe a little bit more dimension a little bit of swell or something in there but with the process that they make them in uh, I would say the suba is fine the previous wakazashi that I had from zombie tools I did have the previous version of this and I I think well, I like the look of the Suba, I, I like the functionality style a bit of the other one. Um, these kind of Ricasso areas on the blade are, well, you could get a finger up there if you wanted to, and I can't really do that. So this little well right here, apart from making it perhaps easier to sharpen without scuffing things, um, doesn't have the same usefulness other than aesthetically being neat looking. Um, anyway. As I talk about the scabbard, it's a Kydex sheath with a leather wrap on it. This little nubbin on the back of the blade is what retains it in, and then the little leather strap holds it in. It rattles a little bit if you move it about, so it'd be nice if it didn't. If you're hustling about in the woods and trying to be quiet about it, it, it bounces and rattles just a little bit. Not obnoxiously so, it's made of plastic, so it doesn't, doesn't ping too much, but there is some noise factor there. Uh, it could be a little bit tighter. At the same time, it retained and did the job. It also has holes to mount things and whatnot, if, if that's your thing. Um, that said, it's a Kydex sheath. There's not really much to talk about there. The snaps on there are nice. It's got a little Zombie Tools logo on the snap, and you can take that off and move it. It's not riveted in such a way. It's put on with good materials, and that's, I suppose, as much as I can say about the sheath. Other than I try to do some Japanese-style sword techniques with it, and it doesn't really work because the spine is open a little bit, so I can't draw and sheath it the way I, I might a Wakazashi or a Katana. Anyway, onto the blade, the pointy pointy stabby part. So the, the sides of the blade are, have some sort of patina on them. And I don't know if it's forged scale or if it's etched or something, but it's pretty stable. If I hold it, not, you know, there's not gunk and stuff that comes off on my fingers, which is something that I look for in these kind of heavy patinated style blades or the zombie tools rustic blades. Sometimes they seem to get thrown in a vat to, to rust prematurely and then it all comes off on my hands because they're not they're not cleaned up. But this is, uh, the material seemed really durable, it didn't scratch easy, and it also has like some splatter patterns in it along with the etched zombie tool logo, which is pretty subtle. Um, but that patterning means that if it does rust, if it does get stains, it kind of adds a little bit to the character of the blade. But this one didn't have it, it had a really prominent bevel and then a secondary bevel, which was sharpened to a, about 25-ish degrees. Uh, measurements incidentally and all that kind of stuff are in the description down below if you're interested in the measurements that I took for this specific one. Uh, but there is some other nuance to the blade. So it's got the little nubbin on the back. It's got this kind of well right here, which leads up to the secondary bevel. It, it's a little, I like the aesthetics of it, but it doesn't really serve a great function other maybe than sharpening perhaps, but I, I, I would almost rather it go all the way down from a, a blade perspective. Um, it doesn't, this doesn't seem to aid a whole lot in retention in the sheath at all. Anyway, uh, the lines on it, or aren't anymore, but were <laughs> when they were there, relatively clean, and there's, there's, well, handy work with a grinder here that shows some skill if they're grinding by hand. I don't see a lot of ripples. Most of the lines are pretty crisp and clean. They don't waver a lot. There's there's a little bit of handmadiness to it, but overall really, really minor and much less than I was expecting in a $500 sword. I, I see lines less clean on swords, much more expensive. Uh, the spine is sanded as well as chamfered a little bit. There's a slight sanding of the edge. Those as well are, are straight. There's a little bit of profile taper or was on the blade uh, that turns terminates in a, a tip that looks very Japanese-esque but doesn't have a yukote, not that all Japanese swords did. Anyway, it looks a little bit more Japanese-y from, from the tip up, apart from the very prominent secondary bevel. There isn't, though, really any any distal taper, so it remains one thickness throughout. That made it a very rigid blade. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I didn't grab the weapon dynamic stuff, is I had a lot of trouble finding the blade nodes and the handle node, because I, if I whacked on it, I didn't see a lot of vibration. Likewise, in the thrust, though, it doesn't bend or flex much, so if you need to penetrate a zombie skull, it's not going to be a, a flexy, wavy blade. Anyway, there is character and nuance to the blade. I, I, I like the profile, I like the silhouette. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this area here, just from a functional standpoint. Like I, I like the other one where I could get a finger up on it if I wanted to, but I digress. The, the handle is plenty, uh, plenty enough to <laughs> give me leverage, I suppose, in terms of length. Now I'll talk about moving it around, and simply put, this is a cumbersome sword to move, but not egregiously so. It is overbuilt and heavier than it needs to be. It's about as heavy as a reasonably hefty katana. Um, 
and that makes it overbuilt by ounces rather than pounds. So that I think is an important distinction because a lot of these zombie apocalypse style weapons that, that look like this, you think they're going to be heavy and cumbersome, and this is, but it's not ridiculously so. It's not a five or a 10 pound sword, it's, <laughs> but it is heavier than a typical sword of its size would be. However, it's also a little bit more durable and a little bit more rigid, and it's not egregiously heavy, but you're going to be fatigued moving it around. So if you're attacked by a large horde, hopefully you can conserve your energy <laughs> and, and go for the head with thrust that take a little bit less uh, energy out of you. But in doing lots of chops, you definitely will feel it. Uh, one other note I would say about moving it around that I discovered was that the handle is not particularly comfortable to use with two hands. If I really lean into something and try to use two hands, that's when I really feel a lot of reverberation in the bottom of the handle here. So if I use two hands up here, that's kind of goofy uh, feeling. If I keep a hand down here, it really puts a lot of shock into my hand and is not comfortable. Likewise, there's a reasonable amount of vibration up here too. The node is somewhere down here, or at least that's where I don't feel a lot of shock in my hand, but that limits me to very hefty swings with one hand rather than two. And if I use two hands on a big swing, it, it really isn't very comfortable. Even in gloves, it's not a particularly comfortable thing to do. So um, the dynamics of the sword are off a little bit in that way. Now, if it's life or death and you got to get through that motorcycle helmet, then swing for the fences. Your hands will survive. They just won't be comfortable. But I find a lot of times if I'm really swinging hard, then I want to be doing it in one hand uh, rather than two, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Anyway, um, apart from that, there really wasn't much else to say. I, I liked moving it around. It was reasonably comfortable. In some of the chop, though, I did find that this handle lost... In, I lost the index, it turned in my hand, and I would have to adjust. Uh, it was usually only on the harder swings, though. Apart from that, I didn't have a huge amount of problem indexing. Likewise, if I'm cutting a pool noodle, a tatami mat, or something that isn't going to fight me back, uh, I can grab it with two hands, and I didn't feel any discomfort there. It wasn't until I was like hitting a tree or a log or uh, something really heavy that I really started to feel a lot of shock in my hands. Now, speaking of cutting, I cut pool noodles and I cut water bottles and I cut, well, basically the types of mediums that you would cut in your backyard for fun that wouldn't inherently be damaging to a sword. And it did all those spectacularly. It popped the pool noodles apart, it chopped the water bottles. It did all of that kind of stuff. I moved on to cutting a few other thises and thats. I used it to trim down some cardboard or cut up or cut apart some boxes in the garage and it did all that. It was reasonably fun. Um, I, it's not necessarily super easy to like cut the tape and some stuff and some very refined work but that's not necessarily what you would typically use this for it, regardless of breaking down boxes and stuff it did that spectacularly it cut them apart it cut deeply into them uh, without you know being in a confined space with my garage door opener above me i couldn't really swing for the fences but i could generate a good amount of power and cut into the box per boxes pretty deeply in a confined area and it was easy to move around and it also held its edge really well i didn't notice any diminishing of the edge it's a pretty robust edge at the same time it it's pretty sharp and stayed that way uh for really most of the duration of the testing. I didn't see any edge defamation and I didn't feel like it was losing its edge um, throughout the, the course of testing. Um, anyway, apart from that, I also cut some ice bl blocks. <laughs> I had some frozen water bottles and whatnot. I cut those. Uh, I brought it out and also did my somewhat traditional smashy bits to, to test some of the other aspects of durability. So after cutting cardboard tubes and, and this, that, and the other, I moved on to whacking it into the Tree of Woe. Now, uh, the Tree of Woe has broken other swords. So taking the sl striking this sword against the f on the flat of the sword on this tree has caused other swords to break. Uh, more than one sword to break, in fact. So it's not an insignificant test. It's also cold outside as I'm doing this. It's about 23 degrees as I'm testing it and smacking the sword on the flat. I'm really swinging hard. I'm kind of feeling it in my elbow, an old injury acting up a little bit and I, nothing's happening. The blade doesn't bend, it doesn't deform, and I'm, I'm swinging pretty hard. I'm also whacking it into the tree. That's where I'm, I'm really feeling the vibration here. But nevertheless, no bending, no breaking. I thrust it several times into the tree as well and tried to break the tip off or at least twist it, bend it. Nothing happened. It's an old rotted tree that needs to come down, but it's, it's reasonably hard wood and uh, nothing happened to the blade 
really whatsoever. There was no no evidence that I had done what I had done, as where other shorts had broken in half or taken a, a relatively substantial bend. Um, so I went to a different tree that I needed to take down at some point and threw the sword at it uh, several times. And sometimes I even hit the tree. Uh, <laughs> more or less, that's where I lost the leather. Some of it came off and hitting the butt. It tore the leather, leather a little bit. I also saw one instance where I threw it and it hit the guard area. And in some cases, this has collapsed subas and really diminished the suba and, you know, caused it to bend or fold over. This one is perfectly, <laughs> perfectly flat. It's not, no indication that I was doing what I was doing. Um, likewise, the, the blade, I, a few times it hit on the side or it hit the blade. It never really stuck in the tree gracefully or in a way that would I would call successful or cool, but I did hit the tree a few times. There's a lot of shock that goes into the sword when you do that. And again, no indication that I had done anything. It stayed straight. Uh, it stayed it stayed healthy with the exception of the leather coming off, but no rattles, no, nothing came apart, no scales popped off, apart from a little bit of tear on the leather, which only tore off and the, the rest of the leather remained. Everything else is totally fine, and that's somewhat impressive. A lot of times a rattle at least would be present at this point, particularly with nothing that's like holding it, all this, all this wangus in place. So um, the fact that it held together as well as it did at this point is very, very impressive. And I think if you're looking for a weapon that's going to hold up in the apocalypse, right, that doesn't require maintenance, that uh, is going to be able to be dropped and go through weather changes, hot and cold, well, uh, this, this is an impressive feat at this point to, to come out with basically a little bit of tear that then didn't unwind the leather and was still perfectly usable uh, and no rattles or nothing no other condition issues is is really quite impressive um, anyway so i brought it to the croquet stick of doom and with this robust edge i wasn't expecting it to take a lot of damage and several strikes in you can see that it, it really didn't there's very minimal damage to the croquet stick it's basically removing the secondary bevel which is about a millimeter maybe a little bit less but no big chunks are breaking off it's rolling the edge over in a few spots and that really is about it. And I'm hitting it hard enough where it looks like there's heat marks or maybe that's rust that's broken off. But uh, I digress. The point is I'm hitting it pretty hard on the croquet steak. Uh, very hard, in fact. I'm hitting it as hard as I can while I'm still feeling in control. And it's not taking big noticeable chunks. And I've got some bad strikes that are, that are applying a lot of uh, pressure on the side of the blade and would easily, you know, break other swords apart or, or break chunks out of them. None of that is happening. Basically, the damage that's here is... is reasonably minor and could be sharpened out without a whole lot of skill or very minimal tools. So at this point, I turn it around and I strike it on the spine of the sword and in, in one or two or relatively few strikes, it basically breaks apart. Now, uh, this is surprising and disappointing. I, I would have thought that the sword would hold up. I didn't see any really significant edge damage happen. Uh, didn't appear to be any problems on the spine. And from what I can tell in the grain structure of the steel, it looks very well heat treated and well, more or less, I was expecting it to, to take more punishment before it, it broke by striking on the on the back of the blade. I was kind of thinking that with this sword, I would have to damage the front side, strike it on the back for a while, flip it over again, maybe take out another sword. Or if I have to, you know, gra grab a grinding wheel or something like that and take a chunk out, then try to go back to the croquet stick. But in this case, several really hard strikes on the edge and then a few strikes on the spine and the, the sword broke apart. So... Well, that's disappointing. It's worth noting how much it went through to get there. I threw it at a tree. I smacked the side of it. I, I hit a lot of very hard things like ice blocks and all throughout the testing, very minimal damage happened. There's very, very few things to complain about. Most of them could be remedied and the item still stayed more or less in zombie killing mode. Well, it lost a, a few inches off the top. You could still do a lot of damage. Frankly, it's a little bit more comfortable a size at the moment. So anyway, um, I'm a little disappointed that it broke where it did, but at the same time, I have to acknowledge how much punishment it took and how well it took that punishment uh, throughout the course of, of the testing. Very often with, you know, even robust, nice steels, I see bending in the tang or loosening or something like that. None of that was the case here. Also, the edge damage when I was striking the croquet stick is really minor and also something to, to be noted because if you have minimal tools in the apocalypse, you, you need to put an edge on. Reprofiling big old chunks is, is a trickier thing to do, but uh, reprofiling a millimeter of damage is at least less so. So 
Anyway, that's what I can tell you about how it broke, what it took to get there, and hopefully that's been helpful. Now it's time for me to answer the question, do I personally think it's worth it or not? And I mean, in short, yes, if it's not evident by my enthusiasm throughout the course of this video, uh, yes, I think Zombie Tools makes a good product. And if you're looking for something to survive the zombie apocalypse, they're, they're hitting the nail on the head. They're making things that are robust but still maneuverable. If you're trying to fight in a swordsmanship duel, you're going to be at a disadvantage. But if you're fighting against slow-moving targets <laughs> like zombies from The Walking Dead, uh, then this is a manageable size, as are uh, some of the other offerings that I've held from Zombie Tools. They seem to overbuild them, but not ludicrously so. And they have designs that I think are pleasing to the eye and difficult to replicate for some of the cheaper uh, knockoff items that are out there. And uh, they're made out of good steel, they're heat treated well, and I think what I've shown here is that there's a lot of stuff about it holding together. Um, when the cord wrap tore, it wouldn't be surprising if like the whole thing kind of crumbled apart. Uh, that wasn't the case. A lot of times I'll see these things manufactured, these zombie apocalypse or tactical style things where, you know, something comes off on the handle and then the whole thing starts to fall apart. Or at least the wrap might come off and, you know, spiral, spiral off. But that didn't happen here. Or striking the guard really hard on a tree. Uh, it wouldn't have surprised me if like a rattle or a bend happened. I'm, I'm kind of very surprised that none of that did. I'm a little disappointed by where it broke um, on the croquet stake and flipping it around, but it took a lot of damage in spectacular fashion, lots of hard strikes on the croquet stake. And it's also worth noting that it's 23 degrees out, so it's tend to break a little, little quicker in the cold. So I wonder how well it would have held up if it were a, a warmer day. Unfortunately, I can't test that fairly. If I bring this section out on a warmer day, it's going to last longer. The, the shorter it is, the, the more they take to break. Anyway, um... That is what I can tell you. Yes, I think so. Yes, if you want a zombie apocalypse weapon. If you're looking for a finesseful camping machete, may, you know, maybe. This is a little, little overbuilt for a machete um, or a little chunky for a machete. Um, if you're looking for a, an elegant, you know, fencing weapon, no, no, not so much there. But if you're looking for a zombie apocalypse weapon, which is what they're advertising for, I think this is hitting the nail right on the head. I think it's a, it's a fantastic piece. At $475, it's simple, but there's a lot of craftsmanship and good work that went into this, and I would say, yes, it is worth it. it I understand uh, why they have the wait times that they do. This is a, is a well-made product. Um, despite my, my <laughs> noting that it broke, I do want to note that making it to the Croquet Stake of Doom, particularly in winter, is, is a bit of a um, is a success, right? And while I would have loved it to last a little bit longer, I would all, you know, I'd love it if it were a super sword, but it's, it's not, it's not fair of me to expect that. Making it to the croquet stick of doom in 23 degree weather and surviving what it did, it, it should really be nothing but a success, uh, or, or counted that way, at least it, it is to me. So for me, yes, if you want something like this, $475 does not seem extreme. If you're not looking for a zombie apocalypse weapon or, or a durable backpacky kind of woodsy machete type thing, then no. <laughs> no, but I I don't I don't see a lot of people being confused like oh, I was looking for a, a blade for the dojo and I went to zombie I don't I don't see people getting confused with with what's being offered here. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I'll stop babbling now. Uh, special thanks again to Sorter and Matt for sending this my way. It was a pleasure to test out. I hope you all enjoyed. Cheers and thanks for watching.